China is paying a toxic price for its economic boom. Dense smog caused by coal fumes, vehicle exhaust and other pollutants has prompted thousands of Chinese in the north of the country to say enough is enough. The so-called smog refugees are jumping on flights down south in search of cleaner air. Kim Mogyun has the details. For the first time this year, China's environmental watchdog has issued an air pollution red alert for six straight days. The alert, which has been in place since last Friday, covers more than 20 cities in the country's northern region. The alert suspends operations at more than 3,000 construction sites in Beijing, and highways in Hebei and Tianjin have been closed due to low visibility caused by dense smog. Residents are advised to stay home or wear masks when outdoors as the number of patients with respiratory problems has spiked dramatically. I think from the perspective of the public, it is also a way of seeking for psychological comfort. Fleeing the toxic air, hundreds of worried residents dubbed smog refugees have booked flights to southern inland and eastern coastal areas where the air quality is better. Even though the country asks students of primary and middle schools to stay at home, if weather pollution cannot be improved fundamentally, we are still worried. The Beijing Evening News reported that demand for flight tickets bound to southern areas nearly tripled and that seats for popular resort areas in the south, such as Sunya, Dali and Xiamen, were sold out. Experts in the tourism industry say the trend of traveling against smog is expected to become a major driver of winter travel in China. They forecast some 150,000 additional travelers will escape the capital area this month. Kim Mogyan, Arirang News. And a man in China says he is taking the government to court because of all of the smog. Beijing is suffering through a week of dangerous air pollution levels. Even Chinese officials call the air unbearable. Seth Doan took this photo of Beijing from an airplane and then posted it on Twitter. Look at that. He shows us why everyone there is worrying about breathing. Beijing's skyline disappears into smog as traffic cops and even toddlers don masks. Pollution here is primarily caused by coal burning for heat and the more than 5 million cars on the road. Students outfitted statues with masks to push classmates to think about pollution, while others are making smog a not-so-subtle partner in photos circulated online. Many of us have apps on our phones that tell us pollution levels. The EPA set up a scale of 0 to 500, with 500 being the worst. Today's pollution reading is above 500, beyond index. That means the average pollution levels are around 20 times higher than what the World Health Organization considers safe. Uh, it doesn't just kind of roll in, you just sort of lose the, uh, lose the skyline. So There's not much of a view from the 15th floor of American doctor Richard St. Cyr's apartment. At Beijing United, where he's a family physician, patients pepper him with questions. Does an air purifier actually work? You know, does a mask actually do anything? Um, should you exercise outside on a bad day or not? Um, These are all the questions that you would find as a doctor, people would come to you and ask. Yeah, and it's things that I want to know. He started a blog to dole out advice and reveal what data he could uncover. Many times I've gone around my apartment like a crazy man with a, an air particle monitor and I've borrowed like many machines and I'm testing them in different rooms and I'll publish the results on my blog. Beijing has not raised its color-coded alert to red, the highest level, but for nearly a week, the city has encouraged schools to keep kids inside and residents to wear masks. State media has broadcast pictures of a steel factory being demolished because it's one of the heavy polluting industries here. And it's reporting that 147 industrial companies in Beijing have cut or suspended production to combat smog. While clothing was optional at Beijing's annual naked run, masks were worn. And when China's President Xi Jinping made a surprise visit to a Beijing neighborhood earlier this week, much of the chatter online was that he did not wear a mask. China's pollution problems are expected to be on the government's agenda at the National People's Congress, set to begin March 5th. After last year's meeting, China's premier said the pollution gave him a heavy heart. But the Chinese government's attempts to deal with pollution problems are difficult to detect on a day like this. For CBS This Morning, Seth Doan, Beijing.
I think this is one of the, the biggest stories of I the do next too, Nora. You know, couple of days. Your son lives I was going to say, I was talking to Will the other day. He has on a mask. He has an air purifier. I'm trying to convince him to come back home. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't listen to me. Because you're he worried says, about the air, air I'm quality. very worried about the smog. I mean, when I look at that, I think it's very scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why a government that powerful with so much centralized power can't do something. And yeah. it's not getting better. That's what's so scary about it. It is not getting better. We will keep following that story. Meet Chinese artist Liu Bolin. The mobile phones attached to his life jacket are live streaming to the internet. It's his way of taking a stand against China's dramatic air pollution caused by coal-fired factories and runaway traffic congestion. This smoke is a disaster. From the perspective of human development, it's a problem our country and our generation has to face. As an artist, to discuss it with images is what I think we need to do. Designer Wang Shuqin is also keen to stir up debate, but his approach is more practical. A keen jogger, he got sick of running through smog with masks that don't fit. So he decided to take off his jogging shoes and use them to design his own tailor-made face mask. I'd like to sell those things, but that wasn't my attention when I first started doing this. It was more about getting attention. The most important thing is turning those trainers into an object with a different meaning. The extent of the problem is massive. Major cities in their surrounding provinces are badly affected. The concentration of small particles that people can breathe in has soared to levels researchers believe cause 1.4 million premature deaths every year. The Chinese authorities have begun to react. In 2014, they declared a war on pollution that includes the ability to restrict traffic and shut down factories. But faced with what some are calling an air apocalypse, people are getting impatient. This time lapse footage shows how dramatic the situation can get as smog slowly engulfs the capital, Beijing. Factories have been closed along with schools and flights have been cancelled in China. It's not because of industrial unrest or natural disaster. It's because of atmospheric pollution, very man-made and increasingly deadly for both the Chinese people and the economy. This air quality red alert's just the latest of many. The smog here lasts almost all day, every day. I've been here for eight years and have almost never seen blue skies. Although China has made strides in ending the use of dirty energy like coal, 2016 has gone down as a black year in terms of health and lost production due to poor air quality. As the economy slows, China is keen to seek ways of restoring growth, and every pollution peak requiring drastic measures brings home the urgency of the country's task. From the dizzying heights of a skyscraper in Beijing, the scale of China's pollution problem becomes apparent. The north of the country was shrouded in hazardous levels of smog for a fifth day, disrupting flights, traffic and closing factories and schools. Hundreds of inspectors were out to enforce temporary bans on barbecues and ensure cars with even number plates were the only ones on the road. The sheer volume of pollution highlights the environmental cost of resurgent coal production in the world's second largest economy. Clearly the government is not trying to hide this away. I mean, everybody is talking about the pollution. Uh, the premier minister has called for a war against pollution and there's very, very many investments going into making the air better. However, I mean, what we see today is the consequences of the sins of probably a whole generation of development, fast development, which clearly did not have environment at its center. Millions of people are at risk of suffering from the effects of airborne pollutants, which are up to 100 times higher than the safe limit in some regions. I'm worried about the pollution as there are so many particles in the air. Unlike the old times when I was a kid, it was just fog, not smog. The government should not only focus on shutting down factories and limiting cars. That can only scratch the surface. I think they should change the economic development structure. It will be years before the benefits of measures taken to quell the so-called air apocalypse will be felt. In the meantime, millions are paying for the cost of China's rapid economic growth with their health. China's choking pollution is not stifling creativity. 
For the minimalist, there's this nose mask, which the company donated to traffic cops. Or something a tad more cumbersome, this smog-fighting bicycle, built by Beijing artist Matt Hope. The idea is that the purified air would come through this yeah, tube. Yeah, and then you, you can breathe it in here. How well this Chinese Air Force mask works, I have no idea. Hope explains the bike is more art than appliance, dreamed up to vent frustration. It makes you not want to live here. The pollution is so bad. Yeah. Pollution prompted a travel company in Hunan province to promote fresh air brought down from the mountains by letting people breathe bags of it. This woman, eight months pregnant, declared, I just breathed and the baby moved. Pollution is blamed for up to half a million early deaths each year in China. An article in The Lancet explains lowered life expectancy is primarily due to heart and respiratory diseases. The problem is so serious that it spawns spoofs. This rather theatrical video shows Chinese villagers collecting cans of fresh air in air quotes. <laughs> the man behind it is self-professed millionaire and philanthropist Chen Guangbio, who's known for recently trying to buy the New York Times. He started producing cans of fresh air with his face on it, handing them out on a smoggy day last year. I believe that if we don't protect our air today, we will have to buy fresh air one day, he said. There's actually a price tag for fresh air. Through this dramatic way or gimmick, I try to advocate protecting our environment. So. Even you admit this is a gimmick. This is really to raise awareness more than anything else. I believe that through such a show, I can wake people up, he told me. There are also government efforts to fight pollution. This drone was developed by a state military aviation group. It claims to disperse smog-busting particles. A fog cannon appeared in local media. It sprays water and allegedly prevents dust and reduces the concentration of pollutants. So Chen Guangbio demonstrated his canned air. This is rent. very fresh. Your mind must be very clear now, he said. Hmm, it smells more like lead. <laughs> it could be decades before China solves its air pollution problem. In the meantime, there's a photo editing app for smartphones. One touch and the smog disappears. For CBS This Morning, Seth Doan, Beijing.